Hello and welcome. This is the Astrology of the Week Ahead podcast. I'm your host, Chani Nicholas. The Chani app is officially available on Android. You can download it now and get access to everything from daily horoscopes, daily readings for moon phases and signs, a library of audio affirmations and meditations, current sky horoscopes, weekly sign-specific readings, rituals and journal prompts, real-time transits, birth chart breakdowns, push notifications, and so much more. Share the news with all your Android besties. This week, we are talking about the full moon in Pisces. That is the big ticket item. Anytime that there is a full moon during a week, we know that we can kind of focus there and that there will be a bit of a crescendo. In terms of the activity in our life, or maybe in terms of our emotional experience or our physical experience, we want to see what comes to the surface, thinking about like, being part of that wave or that tide that swells. There's something that comes up usually with a full moon. Or we can think of a full moon as really big and bright in the sky, which it is shedding light on some part of our life. And the part of our life that this full moon touches down upon or sheds its light upon is all dependent on your rising sign or where Pisces falls in your chart. So go and listen to your weekly reading on the Chani app to find out more about that. But in general, this full moon is hefty. Now, I wouldn't normally say that. I wouldn't usually use that word for a full moon in Pisces because Pisces is dreamy and watery and flowy and goes in every single direction, sometimes has no direction, just exists like a great ocean. And this one is a little different because of the fact that Saturn is sitting in Pisces. Now, Saturn moved into Pisces in March of 2023 And this is the first full moon in Pisces since that's happened. So in a lot of ways, what this full moon is shedding light upon is the structures that we have been able to erect and put in place since March of 2023. And that's important because this is not like a moment to judge ourselves for the entirety of what we are to do. Saturn is going to be in Pisces for the next couple of years. This is the first of a couple of full moons that will be in this sign with Saturn here. And so we just want to think of the initial moments, the initial stages of building a structure in our life or of committing to something. And There's a lot of ways in which we commit to things oftentimes that are like too big or overwhelming for us to feel inspired to work through. And so it's really important to break certain things down. Like we don't have to have built the whole thing. We can't build the whole building at once. We have to find the ground upon which we're going to build. And then we have to survey the ground and see how level it is and see how We need to work structurally to just lay the foundation. So I don't want you to use this moment to judge yourself too harshly as Saturn would have us do. I want you to use this moment to just reflect openly and honestly on the ways in which you've been able to possibly put some markers down about where it is you're re-kind of formatting your life Again, depending on where this full moon is landing for you. So there's that piece of it. There's like, okay, well, what did I start to do in March that is now starting to take a little bit of shape? And what is this week shedding light on or spotlighting? Is that a word? Or putting a spotlight on that is like, oh, I need to pay attention to that part of the structure. I need to pay attention to that part of the commitment. Or this is, the, this is the place where I might be lacking some integrity. You know, if we want to commit to something, we are actually committing to changing ourselves to be the kind of person that does that thing, usually. If we're committing to something, hopefully it's something that's going to challenge us. And hopefully it's something that's going to 
call the best of us forward. And so you can think about the commitments that you made around March of 2023 and see how you've been developing yourself to become the person that is doing a little bit of that commitment each and every day consistently, methodically, and certainly with some sense of responsibility because, again, hopefully we are choosing commitments that we feel are going to grow us and mature us, Saturnian kind of themes, and develop us into the kinds of people we're proud of. And to do that, we have to be ever kind of evolving our commitment to our integrity. The other piece of it is this is a full moon sitting next to Saturn, which can feel a little confining. And if this moment or if midweek you're like, oh, man, I just don't have the kind of get up and go that I wish I did, that's okay. It's good to know when we are up against something hard and we are up against something that is immovable. And the gift of Pisces is that it just continues to move in any kind of direction that's open to it. So there is this sense of like, okay, I might be pausing right now, but also where can I seep into? <laughs> you know, it's like Pisces is like when you pour water on the ground, it, it finds somewhere to go. It's like, okay, I'll fit in somewhere. It's, it's really malleable and very mutable. It's a mutable sign, but it's water. So when water connects with a hard surface, it settles into it. And so maybe see what the boundaries are or what the stop signs are or what the walls are and see what it is to really like lean into them and say to yourself, like, could this give me some support? Could I, we talked about this last week, but could I take a little rest here possibly? Is this like a cool, shady, confined space where I can curl up and have a moment to myself? Or does this feel like I'm receiving a no or some kind of boundary that maybe offends me personally for a moment, but perhaps it's been put here for my good too. So let me check it out. The other thing about this full moon, we could interpret it as there's always a million ways to interpret it in, you know, a Pisces kind of fashion or to honor the sign itself is that, you know, Pisces is about the great dream. And in a lot of ways, because it's a sign that's ruled by Jupiter in the traditional system, It says yes to everything and it's really expansive and it, again, wants to go everywhere and and taste everything and know everything and have a, you know, it's just like, yeah, let's let's expand out into life and and connect to as many different possibilities and ways of living as possible. And that's great. And also, in order to manifest anything, we have to cut things off or we have to say no to things or we have to say, okay, that's it. That's the time we've got. That's a wrap. Like, let's call this a day. And that's what Saturn does. So, a full moon in Pisces next to Saturn is like, okay, well, what's the dream? What's the vision? What's the big yes that you want to say? And what's the reality of making that real? What's the reality of the situation? There's a reality check here, but that's how we manifest things too. So it's not bad, obviously. It's a process. Making our dreams a reality is a process that demands we grow up, right? That we are like, okay, I'm accountable. I'm responsible. I'm going to be the one who makes the specific types of commitments or sacrifices or both to the thing so that it can be built. So this might also be, again, a moment where you're looking back at like what began in March and what is being spotlit right now. What do I need to double down on in terms of my commitment and in terms of developing my integrity? What is the dream and how am I becoming the container for that dream? That's how I like to think of Saturn. I like to think of Saturn as the container that we can pour ourselves into. So yes, it's limiting, but that's what containers do. And to feel contained in a way that helps me to alchemize and helps me to create is a good thing. So thinking of containment as a positive thing in the best of ways We're wanting to like pour ourselves into something 
that has a really beautiful structure and a gorgeous container that is sturdy and sound enough architecturally to hold all of the changes we have to go through in order to make something manifest in this world. Right before the full moon on Monday, Uranus stations retrograde, which should bring a little bit of a rumble to the surface. There is a shift, a change, and what gets highlighted at the beginning of the week is our ability to break free of the things that we feel are confining us and to remain as close as possible to the truth. Also, it's a comment or a commentary on how we're working with our resources. There's something here that will pull focus in regards to the earth and its stability, instability at this point. And Uranus in Taurus is also speaking to our financial systems. Again, any ways in which we're working with our resources or the ways in which we're trying to reinvent how we work with our resources. So there's that. Then there's the full moon on Wednesday. And then on Sunday, Venus stations direct. We'll talk a lot about this next week because technically it stations direct after the next content drop drops. But bear in mind that we've got a full moon. So it's full feeling. It's in Pisces. It's sitting with Saturn. So it gives us a reality check on something, but also it gives a fullness to our feelings because it's a water sign. And Venus, a planet of relationships, a planet that sensitizes us to a great deal, is also pulling focus because it's stationing direct. So we can think of the station directs as like a moment of being released from something, but we're not fully moving forward yet, right? Like Venus is slow, 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 pivoting, changing directions. And so we're in a transitional moment. And All of the things we've been working on during the Venus retrograde are most likely going to also feel like they're having their moment of magnification and also focus. So pay extra special attention to what comes up for you over the course of the weekend, especially, you know, the whole week that has to do with what you've learned about being in relationships, what it is you want to center how it is you are learning to shine in your relationships, what it is you want to shine a light on, and the sweetness of connection in your life, or what inhibits sweetness and connection and harmony and peace and love in your life. What is it that you can do to create more space for connectivity, for love, for relationships, for connection? And then, of course, as Venus stations direct, we can look to the headlines, we can look to the newsreels, we can look to our news feeds for stories that are Venusian in nature, which are, again, about relationships, about women, about queer folks, about gender nonconforming folks, and the issues that impact us, especially as they relate to gender, as we live still within the confines of patriarchy as we're still actively dismantling it. So those are things that I will be kind of looking for in terms of what this Venus Direct might be for us. Also, anything to do with art and culture and, again, social innovation because of how this Venus retrograde was set up, but also like how we might be working towards a greater sense of social cohesion or how we're dealing with the things that disrupt our ability to live in a world that is just and equitable. All right, y'all. Sending you tons of love, many, many blessings. I will see you back here next week for more on Venus Stationing Direct and also a very special Mercury, Kazemi, there's a really beautiful moment to work with for connection, creativity, but also communication, getting your message out and spreading the word about something. Even though it's Mercury Retrograde, there is one really good day and it is next week. 
Thank y'all so much for leaving us reviews in the app store. We truly do appreciate them. I wanted to leave you with this one. It's called Chani, my sister, my friend, and confidant by Indiana Mom of One. Okay, so Chani's voice is truly like a sister's, calming, reassuring, and loving, guiding me through on my journey of life. She inspires me with the work she and her team does, not only focusing on the individual and each unique blueprint or horoscope, there's a podcast for the collective as well, which is something unique to her app and gets me thinking that I'm actually part of a whole and how important that is and how I can keep that aspect in my mind throughout my day to day. My eight-year-old son and I love to listen to the meditations and he loves the art just as much as I do and everyone else I've introduced to this app. Thank you, Sister Chani, and lots of love to you and your team as you guys are doing great things. I'll see you back here then. Bye for now. Bye.